So as we are getting started, allow me to take you through a quick run through on how this program is going to look like. We'll have a brief introduction on who SOMO is and what we do. Um, after that, we will have um, a brief introduction on our acceleration program, after which our entrepreneurs will have the opportunity to take us through their businesses uh, live from their uh, different um, operational spaces. And then we'll have a close round um, towards the end, just maybe take a few comments um, and then wrap up um, the whole presentation for that. So with that said, um, allow me to just take you through um, who SOMO is and what we do. Thank you very much. Um, so from the name itself, as you can see there, um, SOMO, which is a Swahili word, which means lessons, um, and lessons for SOMO Africa is a very key role uh, that we use. And that is a reason as to why we pride ourselves as a business accelerator and an incubator that supports um, social entrepreneurs and micro businesses in marginalized communities. And how we do that, we invest in community-led initiatives like the ones you're just about to see and provide them with resources needed to help and build um, sustainable enterprises. Um, we support these entrepreneurs, for example, uh, the guys are just, um, they'll be about to do this presentation with training, mentorship, financing, and access to markets, as well as um, create a set of digital tools that provide customized training and track business performance. And the approach we use to provide these kinds of resources and materials to our entrepreneurs is through the three SOMO Academy that has a specific focus on providing knowledge and business coaching to the entrepreneurs. And we have from a two programs and one digital tool that makes that happen. We have Boost Biz, which is our basic business program. And we have Buruka, which is our socially focused uh, business program. And we have a third program known as Chanuka, which is our business coaching program provided to entrepreneurs in our portfolio. And lastly, we have a digital tool um, for the training program uh, where you can find um, access to entrepreneurial curriculum, either through WhatsApp, through pre-recorded audio business lessons, um, as well as YouTube. The second approach is through the SOMO Invest, where we have a particular focus on investing in micro small businesses by providing them with initial um, capital investment and later on stage um, investment. And we have one program that facilitates that and a tool uh, that encompasses all that. So we have Inuka that has the focus of um, providing this um, initial um, capital and later stage um, capital, later stage funding um, through pitch competitions. And we also assist in providing uh, other later stage funding uh, through partners. And then we have Digicoa which is SOMO's USSD and WhatsApp-based platform uh, that these entrepreneurs use to um, track and see how their businesses are performing. And then lastly, the last approach we have is the SOMO channels, where we have a specific focus on providing a facility and a space for production and later on leveraging our own uh, resources to enable these entrepreneurs to um, sell their products. And um, Tanganeza, which is the production shared facility where they get uh, access to machines, branding and marketing um, services. And we have Somoduka um, that facilitates um, the selling of these products either through our online platform or physical shops um, around the country. Um, so pretty much that's just the short overview of who Somo is and the different programs and how we work with entrepreneurs. And at this particular stage, I would like to invite um, Joshua to take us through the next piece as he invites um, our entrepreneurs. Um, thank you very much and over to you, Joshua. Thank you so much, Maureen, for such an amazing introduction. So my name is Joshua, as Maureen has just mentioned, and I lead uh, investments at SOMO Africa. So uh, I have been with SOMO uh, since the beginning and I have clearly got to understand the challenges that entrepreneurs go through firsthand. I got a chance actually to go through the SOMO acceleration program and uh, gathered a wide range of experience. 
that have really helped me to successfully work with uh, uh, these impactful entrepreneurs. Um, we have so far invested in uh, over 200 businesses and created over 3,000 jobs. And our businesses are still doing an amazing job across Kenya. So at this point, uh, I will first, um, uh, you will first hear from Greg, founder of City Shamba. Uh, through uh, City Shamba, Greg is creating uh, food sec secure urban communities. Uh, so um, at this point, let's uh, have Greg take it up. Hi guys, uh, my name is Greg Imani, the CEO of City Shamba. And uh, City Shamba is an initiative that is presenting urban areas as part of the solution to the war against hunger, malnutrition and uh, food insecurity. So we have uh, urban agriculture resource and information centers like uh, the space that we have here that we are in, uh, where urban communities can come in. So uh, this is an initiative that I, I am passionate about, uh, bearing in mind that I've had first experience on food insecurity. Uh, growing up, uh, uh, getting three meals in a day has, was a challenge. And this was not an isolated case. I could uh, witness from uh, my friends and the uh, community in general that uh, people could not really afford three meals in a day. It's a social challenge. And so I purpose uh, to try and alleviate the situation. And that are very ideal for an urban setup. And also one thing that we are trying to do in this, we are trying to integrate uh, urban areas with urban agriculture in that we are teaching people to recycle the organic waste. We are teaching people to use the uh, plastics and the uh, tires as grow beds so that they can produce food using the locally available resources. Yeah. So uh, we are targeting urban communities, which include uh, schools uh, all the way from uh, primary schools to universities. They can come here and see and learn. Uh, we are also working with youth and women groups uh, who are interested in starting initiatives on agribusiness enterprises where they can at least generate income as they are producing food in urban areas where we have uh, a lot of demand due to the population. So uh, we are also targeting households. Uh, we make gardens apart from the training. We make very innovative gardens in people's homes, uh, like the corn garden that you are seeing here, hanging gardens, staircase gardens. We make them and commercialize them so that we can be selling to people who are interested in producing their own food at the comfort of their home, for uh, primarily for household consumption. So this is one of the resource centers that we have. Next to us, we also have an aquaponic farm where we, uh, it also acts as a demo farm where children and uh, groups come to learn. So I joined SOMO in 2019, and uh, uh, basically this space was just, we, we, we just had the idea of, uh, the, the idea was there and the vision was there to have the resource centers, but uh, this, this space was uh, bare. And, uh, when we joined SOMO, uh, we got a different perspective from the training, from the Buruka training, and uh, we were able to see things on a different scope, whereby I was able now to transform into a social entrepreneur, trying to now generate income to see how we can at least generate income and uh, create a change, a social change for our community and the world at large. So uh, we were lucky enough to win a, a grant with a, 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 an investment and uh, uh, we got an investment which we transformed this whole place as you can see it's very beautiful with a lot of vegetables and uh, in, indigenous vegetables and so on and the uh, herbs. So we, are, we, we got uh, the funding to transform this space, the investment we used it to transform this space uh, into the resource center that it is uh, right now. Uh, we were also lucky enough to get into the Inuka pitch competition where we got additional investment and uh, we were able to diversify uh, since it's a, it's a learning center, it's a resource center. So we need a lot of uh, things that people can actually come and uh, acquire knowledge of. So we, have, we are now have, uh, having a snail farming unit 
Uh, we also started the aquaponics unit where we are rearing uh, catfish and uh, we are recycling water into an aquaponic uh, farm where we are using the uh, wastewater from the fish to produce food. So all this was enabled, uh, came through because of uh, the investment from SOMO. Uh, SOMO has also been helpful because uh, personally I've grown, I've developed as a trainer. We have a hub uh, here in uh, near our resource center in Kayole, and I'm a trainer right now. I'm also assisting other businesses, small businesses, uh, to train them on how they can manage their businesses. Um, we are also using the SOMO tools. Uh, we have the uh, to track our finances and uh, to keep records. So we have these tools that we are using. The cash flows they are really coming in handy. Uh, from SOMO, they're really coming in handy to ensure that we are able to track our, our, our finances and how our businesses are performing. Uh, also sales, SOMO is helping us with sales. We have gotten uh, clients from the SOMO Duka where we present uh, our products and then we are able to acquire customers uh, from that. So uh, recently, uh, due to the nature of our business, you see that we are dealing with soil, we are dealing with manure, we have these hanging boxes. So uh, our products are a bit bulky and we had a challenge of uh, transporting them to our clients' areas. So uh, through the SOMO Invest, we were able to get investors who came in and now I'm happy to report that we have a truck and uh, the challenge of transporting these uh, bulky goods to our customers is no longer there. So that is a really game changer for us and it's also increasing our revenue. Uh, the impact that we've had so far as City Chamber, we've been, uh, right now we've employed seven uh, youth from this community who are uh, working into this resource center. We have two who man here and then other two are into the aquaponics farm, farm taking care of the fish, feeding them and so on. And uh, we have others who are constructing gardens, actual gardens. Uh, if you get a client who requires a staircase garden, a hanging garden, we have them who, who are uh, more or less carpenters who make these gardens and we go and install them into, the, into our clients' homes. We also have uh, trained over 25 youth groups uh, in partnership with other organizations. Uh, we've been contracted, we are now being contracted as an implementing partners with organizations which are interested in urban farming. And uh, recently we've trained of, uh, we've trained 25 youth groups in slums, that is Korokocho and Iwandani. And now they are implementing their own uh, urban agriculture enterprises. So that is a great impact that uh, we've achieved at Seku Shamba. We've also been able to set up uh, over 300 gardens in Nairobi alone in people's homes and others we've been able to set them in schools. Uh, our plan is to get into, because there is a growing demand, especially when COVID came and uh, uh, the dis there was a disruption in the supply of foods. And uh, as we had known it, the food system was disrupted because uh, urban areas depended on the rural areas to, to, to bring in food. So there was cut uh, curfews and uh, transport was cut, so food was a challenge. And uh, through that, we got a silver lightning and uh, we presented to people this idea of growing your own, as our motto says, uh, that they can start growing their own food at the comfort of their homes, uh, primarily so that they can provide food for their own uh, people. Again, we know that urban areas, most of the people uh, work in casual labor, as casual laborers. Uh, so if you do not have money, it directly translates to lack of food. So during the COVID and uh, during the COVID era, and, uh, people were laid off and uh, food was really a challenge. So through that, we got a silver lining and uh, we got more people interested in starting a garden in their home. Since that is, uh, is still growing, we want to get into the demand is there for uh, starting a kitchen garden for uh, families and it is cross-cutting along the different social classes. Uh, we want to start production of inputs, commercial production of inputs, because also food safety has become a concern for so many people. So we want to, and since we are being organic, we have the knowledge, we have the skills to produce 
uh, food to produce safe manures, to produce safe fertilizers, and uh, package it and selling it to uh, these clients. Uh, we are partnering with uh, organic farmers markets. We are still in talks. We want to partner with them so that they can give us a platform where we can get, uh, we can demonstrate our gardens and we can bring in our inputs. We can bring in seedlings. We can bring in the organic fertilizers, the organic manures. We can bring in seedlings uh, so that people can adopt and start practicing urban agriculture. We understand that um, training and uh, passing of this knowledge is not enough. We need to get people into starting practicing and adapting uh, production of food in their homes. So production of inputs is going to be our plan for this year. We want to set up a commercial production unit for all these inputs uh, to ensure that we have the seedlings and we have the soil, we have the manure and everything that is required so that people can start adapting up an agriculture. And that is a potential area, growth area for City Shamba. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Gregory, for such a, a wonderful presentation. So at this point, uh, we, will, um, na uh, we will now go to the next entrepreneur. And uh, now you will hear from Purity and Dennis, founders of Kuza, Kuza Freezers. They produce solar powered fish, uh, fish freezers uh, to produce post harvest lost of fishermen. So uh, at this point, I will invite uh, Dennis and uh, Purity to take it up. And if you have any questions uh, or any comments, please feel free to utilize the chat box. Welcome. My name is Purity Gapuo, the co-founder of Kuza Polas Limited. Our mission is to improve food security by closing the cold chain gap in the fishery sector. We have been able to interact with a number of fishermen here in Mombasa and have understood their pain points in the daily fishing activities. We understood that uh, small-scale fishermen are making huge post-harvest fish losses due to lack of access to reliable and affordable pooling services. Approximately, 30% of their fish harvest is lost before they can be able to consume it or even to sell it. My colleague, Dennis, will take you over through the solution and also how we've been able to impact the fishermen. Welcome. Hello, my name is Dennis Onkangi. I am the CEO and co-founder of Pusa Pulas Limited. Kusa Freezer, as I said, is a pay-as-you-go payment solution that offers affordable uh, pooling services to small-scale fishermen. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to help small-scale fishermen uh, improve the shelf life of their fish harvest and also reduce post harvest fish losses. You find that uh, a single fisherman spends about 400 shillings, Kenya shillings, on a daily basis on ice to preserve their fish harvest, but this has not been reliable on the long run. So with Kusa Freezer, we are not only helping them reduce post-harvest fish losses, but also we are helping them uh, reserve on ice cost. As you can see, this is a production of uh, about uh, 15 Kusa Freezer units uh, that we are looking forward to deliver to small-scale fishermen. But when we started, uh, we started with a pilot phase, with about five pilot phases. Uh, and through these pilot phases, we have been able to learn and get feedback from customers on how we can improve on our product. Uh, through the partnership with SOMO, uh, SOMO Africa, we have been able to learn a lot, more especially on how to manage and run our day-to-day -day business activities. And also through the DigiCore uh, uh, record keeping platform, we've been able to manage our day-to-day -day, uh, um, records. We are also, uh, we, through the partnership also, we were able to get uh, in, the initial, uh, in the initial SOMO investment that really helped us in the pilot phase. Uh, it, it helped us in facilitating the pilot phase so that we could be able to get feedback and improve on our product. Also, through some more partnership, we have also been able to get additional investments through uh, other potential other investors who have really helped us uh, in producing, uh, uh, in scaling our business. Like now, we are in the we are, we are currently, currently producing about 50 products in the next three months. And as you can see here, these are about 10 freezer units that we've been able to produce through the additional investment. 
Uh, so far, we've been able to impact the lives of about uh, 15 uh, fishermen here in the coast who are currently using our Kusa freezer solution. Uh, but we are looking to scale and also start, um, uh, scale our production and reach to many more fishermen. Here at the coast, we know we have about 3,500 small scale fishermen who are in dire need of our, of our Kusa freezer solution. So we believe as our scaling up, uh, as, our, as our future scale up scaling plan to be able to reach all these fishermen and uh, uh, impact and change their livelihood. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Denish, and uh, Purity for such a wonderful presentation. And uh, uh, we shall be moving to the next entrepreneur to present. Uh, so next up is Judy, uh, founder of Globo. Um, you will get to see how she produces Kenyan made natural beauty and uh, hygiene products. So uh, at this point, I will um, invite Judy to take it up. Hello, everyone. My name is Judy, the founder of Glowpop Organic Detergents. In Glowpop, we produce natural detergents for both households and industrial purposes. And these are my products. We have the detergents, the body creams, the essential oils, the, the natural bath soaps, and we also have the, sterilize, the sterilizers. Glow Pop was formed in 2019, where I was sent to my community to repair and fix toilets. It was then I encountered bad audio, stubborn stained floors, and diseases due to bad sanitation. And from my research, I also realized that it was a major problem even in the big institutions. So this motivated me to come up with a business for the soaps. I talked to several friends of mine, of which one of them referred me to Somo Africa, where I was enrolled in 2020. I was trained for three months on business management skills, which has helped me in day-to-day -day operations. After three months, I qualified for a simulation program where I was where I got a invest, which I used it to buy materials and equipment for way and also get my business permits. After then, I've been receiving mentorship on business on business on my business, which has helped me in different business aspects. In summer, through summer two. Also got an investment in the Inuka some of Inuka pitch competition, which has which helped me also to boost my production, and also bought an ETR machine which has helped me to sell my goods into the supermarkets. Through Somo, through Somo channels and Somo circles, I've also been able to sell my products in Nairobi, Kisumu, and Mombasa, of which 40% of my sales comes from. Somo channels. I've, through Somo Invest 2, I've also been able to get to partner with Mkono Loans, who has extended an investment to my business, which will help me to venture fully in the beauty products. In my beauty product line, it's a new product line, and also boost the other production. And now, we have the so the Tengeneza services where they are provided they are providing me with machines. This machine here is a plodder. I use it to make bar soaps. I have the first gear mixer where I mix my hand washes and the toilet cleaners. I also have the chance for the beauty products. I also have the slow gear machine which I make my hands and tethers and lotions there. And here we have the stamp, which I used to stamp the bus stops in my, in my company name. I also have the weighing scale here, and this machine here is for the lotions. Through Tengeneza, the production has been fast and I've been able to meet my clients' demands. This place has also helped me to help me in low cost. There before, I used to pay 800 shillings per production, that is, if I'm producing 200 liters or so, I'll pay a, a labor 800 shillings. But now in this place, 
I pay only 150 shillings to 250 shillings. And the time is also less because I used only 30 minutes to one hour. But there before I used like the, the whole morning doing the production. And also it has increased my sales because the person who was mixing the sauce has now moved to marketing on commission. This place too has helped me in Sene book, bookings and more sections in Sene. This is because of the free advertisement and the certification of the production. In Tengeneza too, the packaging materials and the materials to make the soft are already available there in, at a cheaper price. So I don't have to, I don't have to go, and like before I don't have to go out and look for the materials and buy them in small quantities, which made them so expensive. In this place too, I've been able to, to do my branding here, get more products line, and, and also market them to, and, have, and also have the market access for my products. And through this support, I've been able to train 149 youth and young women, where 28 of them have now employed themselves. I've also created jobs for 10 sales people, 16 cashiers, and 36 transporters. In this place too, and the, the other impact for this place is that I've been able to supply goods over 3,000 households, 162 supermarkets and cosmetics, 10 distributors, 80 shops and 28 institutions. My future plans are, I intend to get, to get a certificate, which will satisfy, satisfy that my products are full organic, are fully organic. I also plan to increase my product line, which will complement the products which I have. For example, if we come to the toilet cleaners, I would like to add like toilet blocks, toilet bowls, and air fresheners. It, I also plan to train more than 500 personnel, so that they become my ambassadors in the East African countries, such as Uganda, Tanzania, South Africa, Rwanda, among others, so that I may access those markets in South Africa. I also plan to purchase a land where I will plant some of my raw materials I use in making my organic products, which include some turmeric, the avocados, the, the coconuts, so that I may be able to get a constant supply of the raw materials. And lastly, within three years to come, I plan to partner with SOMO so that we may establish a facility mainly for IG and beauty line products only. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judy, for such a wonderful presentation. And uh, uh, at this point, uh, just reminding everyone that you can still make good use of the chat box. I can see most of the uh, comments and questions coming up. Uh, the entrepreneurs will be able to respond to them. So finally, we are going to uh, hear from uh, our entrepreneur, uh, Ro Rosalie, founder of uh, Soilwea. So Rosalie is uh, making sandals and uh, uh, to create jobs for youth in uh, Mombasa. Rosalie, if you are ready, please uh, just take it off. Thank you so much, Joshua. My name is Rosalie Akili, founder of Drug Sidewear, and welcome to Drug Sidewear. Uh, let me introduce you to my team. This one here is Sifa. He's assisting with the fixing of the sandals. This one here is Ibra. He's helping with the grinding of the sandals. And Lastly, this one is Joseph. He assists in the fixing of the sandals. Yeah. So the, this is just but a part of my team. I work with 15 women and five youths who assist, assist in the 
Super Sisters, the beadwork, and also the fixing of the sandals. At Rock Swahili Wear, we recycle the used car tires, like this one here, to make the products, the beaded, genuine beaded fewer leather sandals, where we have products for different people. We have products for kids, we have products for ladies, and also products for gents. What inspired me to start this business was that I was raised and brought up by a single mom who is now the late. At the time I was starting this business, I was kind of depressed. I had nowhere to go to. And so I had to look for ways to assist with, with my mom taking care of my siblings. And since she was sick, suffering from cancer, she had to undergo her chemotherapy sessions. And so I had to find for ways to help my family. And being a graduate and a firstborn, I had to look for jobs. And after applying for jobs and unsuccessfully getting none, I had to, I figured out a way on how I can maybe start something that not only help me as a person, but also help other youths, other women who are undergoing the same problem that I was going on. I joined SOMO in 2020, where I underwent the three-month program, Buruka program. I, after that, I received an initial investment that I used in buying the materials that made these shoes here and also enabled us to, go, to open one more outlet where we are here. I also participated on uh, Nikwa Pitch competition where I received an additional investment that I used to expand my business. Apart from the capital investment, I've also received loans through Somo Partners, that is through Somo Invest, where I, I received loan from Kono and Bestella that I used in buying a motorcycle that is now assisting us in doing deliveries for our products within the coastal region and also transporting our materials from Mombasa town. Since, since crossing with the, pro, with the materials from Mombasa town to Mikoni, was, we were spending more on transportation and with the motorcycle, we now save on cost, hence giving us more revenue in return. Somo has also offered us a sales channel where I've, I've been able to sell over 100 pair of beaded pure letter sandals. Through SOMO training and coaching, I've been able to learn more on daily record keeping, that is with Kutikua. I can now easily tell, on, tell how much I've sold in a month, how many customer have, customers have reached, and also the number of expenditure that I've spent during the month. Chanuka Jenkins has also offered me the knowledge and skills with of branding and also marketing my product. Right now, I can I can easily market my product on Instagram page and Facebook, where I've, I've reached more clients through Facebook marketplaces. And so far, I've been able to employ 15 young women me being one of them, and 10 youths, the three are just but a part of the team, giving them financial stability. We plan to buy machines to increase the production rate and also build the production facility to provide more space and better for housing of our machines and storage, since this place here is not big enough for us to do all our stuff. And with drug Sahilwa, we'll be able to provide enough supply to a large customer demand we have now and also reach local and international markets in the next five years. We intend to maximize on marketing and making Sahilwa an outstanding footwear company in East Africa in the next 10 years. Thank you. Thank you very much for that lovely and wonderful presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that was Rock Swahili Wear, uh, Rosalie with her team um, in Mombasa. 
Um, and I believe we've now come to the end of the presentations from our entrepreneurs. And I would like to first of all congratulate and appreciate all entrepreneurs for your lovely and beautiful presentation, taking us through your spaces for some of us who have never been able to get to where you are or we are tuning in from different parts of the world. Um, it's lovely to see um, what you're doing, the kind of impact and value you're creating in those communities. Um, and at this stage, um, there are a couple of questions that came through from the attendees as well as the panelists. Um, so for our entrepreneurs, um, please um, be ready. I'll pick at least a couple, at least one question um, from each entrepreneur if time allows. Um, and uh, you could be able to just unmute and respond to that. And this goes to Gregory from Andy and Carol. Um, it's actually the latest on the chat. Uh, Gregory, how do you select the plants to, to be grown at home and what foods do you produce? Um, so Gregory, if you can just unmute and um, address that particular question, uh, that would be really lovely. Um, as Gregory yeah. is doing that. Perfect. Okay. So uh, for urban agriculture, there's some degree of specialization in that uh, due to the limitation of space, you have to be very specific with the plants that you are growing. So for us, we are mainly focusing on vegetables and uh, uh, herbs because it doesn't make economic and uh, time sense to grow maybe things such as maize, which takes three months and then the harvest is so little. So we focus on vegetables and herbs, the different types of vegetables, including the indigenous ones, and uh, different types of herbs. So that is what we, we, we target to grow. That is where our focus is. And uh, in the Kenyan context, uh, vegetables are widely consumed. People consume vegetables. It's a, it's a common delicacy in, in homes. So that is what we are. We, we choose them, uh, things that can grow at least within a month, you can start harvesting. They can last uh, maybe uh, for five months and then we can replenish the garden again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Gregory. Um, we can move on to the second entrepreneur. Um, for those who are asking for social media handles or platforms uh, for entrepreneurs, um, please uh, just go over to the chat and put in your social media handles so that if there's anyone who's interested to follow you there and just keep on learning and create a partnership or form a business, that would be a great opportunity. Um, so let's move on to another question. I will now randomly pick a question from the panelists. Um, we have one question from, um, I think these, the two questions are for Gregory. I think I'd go one for Judy. Um, Judy Glopop, uh, this is a question for you from Tana. She asks, would be great to hear about some of your failures. Sure, it hasn't been all easy going. And what would you say is your biggest learning in your journey? Okay. One of my main challenges are the materials, the place I get the materials. You'll find sometimes that the materials are so expensive and yet you have already set the cost price. So to change the price to another to a higher price is a big it's a big challenge. I also had there before a challenge of transportation too, where you found that I was just using a lot of money in the Ubers, and now at least I have the motorbike which I'm using now to transport my goods and also to do the marketing too. Another challenge was the people that I'm training. So you'll train some people, they go and train others on charge. I yet have, I have trained them for free. So this makes us, that makes my, most of the trainees to move where they are being trained for them, for the, and being given my market so that they can sell what I have trained them already. So those are some of the few challenges I've been passing through. Another one, you know, the detergents departments, they are lot, they are a lot in the supermarket, but I've been able to put them to put the goals through. Yeah, Maureen, another question? 
Um, uh, just one last one that was tied to that particular question, maybe one learning, uh, the biggest learning you've got from your journey. To go, just commitment and believe in yourself and will pursue anything you intend to do. That is the biggest lesson I've learned. Perfect. Thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. That was Judy. We're just going to quickly cross over to another question from, I'm looking at my chat. We had a question for and from Andy and Caroline Platt for Rosalie. Uh, Rosalie, uh, this, uh, this is the question for you. What materials are used for sandals uh, and great using the youth? So over to you, Rosalie. Rosalie, um, I think maybe as we're trying to get Rosalie back on, uh, I can take another question um, as I'm looking through the chat. Oh, here she is. Rosalie, over to you. Sorry, Rosalie, the question was uh, what material you use for baking the sandals? Um, the question was, uh, what materials you use uh, to make the sandals? Okay. We use leather hmm? and, the, and the used tire, car tires, and the big one to decorate them. Yeah, that's what we use. And this Perfect. to fix them together. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much, Rosalie. Um, I, I'm trying to get one more question for Kuza Frieza. Um, there was a question around how much it would cost to purchase um, a Kuza Frieza um, outright. Uh, so maybe Dennis or team, uh, please respond to that. What is the cost of Kuza Frieza if purchased outright? Security or that is? Yeah, thank you, thank you for the question. Um, so for us, for the one of, for we, ha we have two uh, business models. That is uh, the one of payment of, of 65,000 Kenya shillings. That's about um, $650. And also on a pay as you go payment model, which is now the common one for most of the small scale fishermen who we have been able to, uh, to reach. Uh, so for the pay as you go, they pay uh, 11,600 11, Kenya shillings and a daily installment of 190 Kenya shillings for 22 months, after which they fully own the visa. So the reason why we charge one, 190 per day is because you can imagine that if we are saving 400 shillings on a daily basis on ice, uh, charging them 190, uh, for, uh, 190 per day makes economical sense now that we are eliminating the need for ice for cooling with Kusa Frieza. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dennis. Um, since we have at least 13 or 12 more minutes before we wrap up, um, we're going to take um, a couple of more questions, one round for each entrepreneur. Um, and for this second round, I would like to start off um, again with Gregory. And Gregory, uh, this is a question from James, from the panelist. And he would like to know um, if you sell only in Nairobi or beyond. Yeah, for, for now we are selling in Nairobi, which is acting as our pilot, as as a as an urban area. So, but we are uh, the the plan is to expand, of course, and to have resource centers in other urban areas, in other cities and to grow and then we can take it out there but for now uh, most of our orders are coming from Nairobi but we've got a couple uh, from at the river which is a neighboring county that is Machakos yeah thank you very much Gregory uh, Judy over to you um, another quick question for you um, is what is your most 
popular product? Judy from Glopo, what is your most popular product? Okay, my, mo my most popular pr product is the hand washes, which I sell them to the supermarkets. And the other one is the buttercream and the avocado oil, which I'm selling them to the cosmetics. Yeah. Um, Judy, uh, there was another one that came to me. Um, it, right now, if they'd like to purchase your product, which are some of the places they can be able to find the products? Most of my hand washes are in the supermarket within Nairobi. We will go to Edoret, we'll find a supermarket, a uh, we'll seller called Edoret to sellers. We also have others in Kisumu. We we'll go to Ayang, who we'll sellers will find them there. That is one of my distributors. And Western, we have several shops. So my products are all over. Then the beauty one, the beauty ones that we can find, the beauty products, we we'll find them the, on the online services, mostly in the shops in the town on the CBD. Yeah. Thank you very much, Judy. Um, over to you, Purity and Dennis. Uh, a question is, uh, very cool that you're trying to solve real-time challenges. Have you considered using the visas for other purposes, for example, transporting medication? Why the limitation to fish? Well, thanks, Pat. That's an interesting question. Uh, so basically what you do, uh, we believe that Pusa Freezer is a potential product that can um, fit different market segments. But uh, we started with the small scale fishermen as our initial market segment, and we are looking forward on scaling to also tap into other market segments, such as uh, the medical industry and also even the dairy industry. But uh, now that we're based in Mombasa and most of the people close to us in our communities are fishermen, and this is a real, a real life problem for them, we thought it better to start with them uh, and then scale upwards from there. Thank you very much, uh, Purity and Dennis. Uh, again to you, Dennis and Purity. How much for the freezer can average fisherman afford? Okay, sure. Um, on, on average, uh, most of the small scale fishermen, they are coming from low income communities. So we believe that buying in one office uh, is not easy for them. That's why we have this payers go payment model whereby they only pay a deposit of 11,600 and a daily installment of 190 Kenya shillings. So 190 Kenya shillings is an econo it makes economical sense for small scale fishermen because on a daily basis, they spend at least 400 Kenya shillings on ice. So with the Kusa Freezer, if we eliminate, we say, if we eliminate the need for ice, we are uh, we basically meaning that we are saving 400 Kenya shillings on a daily basis for this customer. So we charge one, 190 Kenya shillings on a daily basis. Uh, for two months, after which now they fully own the freezer. Thank you very much, Dennis. Um, Rosalie uh, from Rock Swahili, where over to you. Um, how do you plan to employ more people through launching your factory? Even with the machines, we still require the manpower, like you see the big one. I doubt if there's a machine that can do this. So with this, the bead work is, is being done by both the, these young men here can do the bidding, that's the fixing. So if the machine will use the manpower for maybe fixing the leather and the, the used tire, the machine will do that, but with the bead work, we'll still be able to employ more women and youth within our locality. Thank you very much, um, Rosalie. I can also see our entrepreneurs have shared different social media platforms. Um, you could find them on. And we've also shared a link to our invest platform for you to just go learn more about the businesses that they're running, watch a short video that explains what I've just, um, just, uh, just did right now and get to just learn more. On behalf of Somo Africa, I would like to once again, congratulate all our entrepreneurs. Thank you for the awesome job that you're doing. Thank you for the lovely presentations. 
and keep on doing what you're doing in those communities, whether you're in Mombasa, you're in Nairobi, operating in different um, villages or places, please keep on doing what you're doing. And to the SOMO team, um, there are very good compliments coming in from the chat. Uh, people appreciate the work that you're doing or rather we're doing with these entrepreneurs. Um, so together with the name itself, SOMO, lessons, learning from each other. And this is what we are all doing. So for the people, uh, for our entrepreneurs, we can just all turn on our videos and maybe just wave and just say thank you for uh, all the participants joining in today. So everyone, that's it um, from today. We are hoping to have more and more of these kinds of um, entrepreneurial calls um, to just show that we have great businesses in different parts of Kenya, and we can definitely go far and beyond. With that said, do have a lovely evening, have a lovely um, weekend uh, that is uh, coming on, and see you on our social media handles or platforms. Um, yeah, thank you. And for those who would like to reach out to our entrepreneurs, um, feel free to just uh, reach out to us directly and we will connect you to the um, entrepreneurs. I'm also just leaving my email address on the chat um, so that if you'd like uh, to just discuss any further, please also feel free to reach out to me directly or anybody else. That's it, everyone. Um, and have a lovely evening. Bye.